Rewrite your story. Rewrite your story. George Weah participated in the presidential elections in Liberia in the year 2005 and lost. In the presidential campaigns, his competitors exploited the fact that he was uneducated. The fact is he didn't even have a high school certificate. Although he could speak English, French, and Italian. George decided to go back to school and there at 206 at the age of 40. He got his high school diploma. He proceeded to Devry University in Miami, Florida, where he got his bachelor's degree in business management. And now he has a master's degree in public administration. On 22nd of January this month, just a few days to come, George Weah will be inaugurated as the president of that country that was founded by freed slaves from the United States. The 1995 World Footballer of the Year and the only African player up to now to have been awarded that prestigious award refused to be defined as an academic failure and a political loser. The Liberian president-elect decided to change his narrative. He has now rewritten his story. And as long as the earth endures, his inspiring story will be passed on from generation to generation in the pages of human history. If an unlearned footballer could dream of becoming a president, why not you? There are no unreasonable goals, just unreasonable deadlines. I want to suggest this afternoon, use the lens of destiny and visualize your future self. See the person you'll end up being. For some of us, it's in 20 years to come. For some of us, it's in 30 years. For some of us, it's in 40 years. But there's a secret person you want to become and you don't want to share with anyone lest they mock you, lest they ridicule you. Maybe there's a secret within you to be the industrialist in Africa. Maybe there's a secret within you to be the next governor of Nairobi. Maybe there's a secret within you to be the president of Kenya. Maybe there's a secret within you to be the UN Secretary General. Maybe there's a secret within you that you don't want to share with anyone else. That is your future self. Now, I would like you to hold a conversation with your future self. <coughs> if this person were to talk to you today, what would he tell you? What choices did they make between where you are and where they are? How did he handle obstacles and barriers and challenges and embarrassing situations and defeats? If this person were to look at you, if your future self was to stare down the life you're living today, what would they tell you? What corrections would they make? What suggestions for the overhaul of your life for you to move from where you are to that person you secretly see? What advice would they give you? Please allow your future self to respond to your present self and write down the responses as you hear them. This is the story you are relating. And the reason I want you to exercise your imaginative power is because you cannot go where you cannot dream. You cannot reach where you cannot see. Did you have some childhood dreams? What dreams did you drop along the way? Pick them up. You have just one life to live. Ignite the sparks, the tiny sparks of possibility that dwell within you and execute the story of your dream into unquenchable flames of achievement. Life is not a practice awaiting the actual performance. Every moment you live, 
you're executing a final performance on your life stage. Life is not a dress rehearsal. Stop practicing what you want to do and just do it. You can't build a reputation on what you intend. Stop waiting for the person you want to become. They may never come your way. And start being the person you want to become. In your life, you will never be invited for auditions. You're both the director of the show and the producer. You're both the scriptwriter and the actor. You're both the judge and the artist in the performance. You're both the learner and the master. You're both the goal setter and the goal executor. No one will come to appraise you. You've got to do it yourself. As a judge to your life story, are you fair with your life story? Everything that has a beginning has an end. Your life on earth had a definite beginning, it has a definite end. In between is your life story, your life journey. How is your life story unfolding? Life has no rehearsals. If you repeated a class, you didn't repeat life. That is part of your story. If a business closed down, that does not mean you have repeated a business. No, it is still part of your story. If you separated with a spouse, that is a story you cannot erase. Today, I've given you a 365 book, page book, to write your story. Nothing has ever appeared in your book before. It's a blank screen. You're on a fresh page today. In the next 365, 360 days, what are you going to write on your life story? We didn't inspire anyone like George Weyers. As long as you can hear my voice, your story is not yet over. God is not done with you yet. So stop projecting or looking at the ends that are closing. Don't cast your eyes to the ends that are closing. Open your heart to new beginnings. One day, when employees got to work, they found a note on the door, written these words. The person who's been hindering your progress, the person who's been sitting on your promotion in this company, has now passed away. You're invited for the funeral at the room prepared in the gymnasium. Initially, all the employees were sad. But after a few moments, they thought, I think this is a good thing. That now I can see the identity of the person who has been sitting on my breakthrough. And one by one, they all passed through the coffin. And when the first guy reached where the coffin was, and he looked inside, he left there in a sober mood, like something had pricked the depth of his soul. He couldn't talk to anyone. Inside the coffin, where they were invited as we traditionally do to give our last respects, he found nothing but a mirror. Beside the mirror were written these words, only you can hinder your progress. Only you can transform yourself. The only way for 2018 to be different is to realize we don't win by chance, we win by change. This change must be an internal process. And because this change is normally infinitesimal and invisible, very few of us are able to notice it. So we begin to notice the visible signs of success in other people. We admire big cars in other people, great businesses in other people, great relationships. Without realizing we are gazing at a mirage, grasping at an illusion. We are admiring the fruits without studying the roots, without realizing that true success is not what is seen with the naked eye, but what happens inside of that person. When we fail to recognize this fundamental truth, we begin changing external circumstances. So we change from one business to another, or we relocate business premises 
or locations. We keep changing jobs because we think there is a certain boss who has been sitting on my promotion. We even locate countries of residence because we think other countries are better than ours. Some people even change their business partners or even life partners because you're projecting issues to others rather than yourself. You think they're the ones sitting on your performance. Thereby you become a prisoner of yourself, repeating the same vicious cycles, recurring patterns. You're in a loop. The only way to get permanent, irreversible changes is an inner work. When you fail to realize that, you think your business will automatically get better. Your marriage will automatically get better. If you're single, I'll automatically begin to attract people. Without realizing your own self-rejection turns people away. 2018 will automatically get better. I'll automatically lose weight. Who told you? My children will automatically be disciplined. Hear me, Kenya. You've got to be intentional. You've got to be automatic. Oh, you've got to be, sorry, deliberate. You've got to be intentional and deliberate. You will not automatically get better. You've got to be deliberate. There has to be a growth plan. You've got to purpose to win. You're not going to win accidentally in any area of your life. I honestly believe if you follow my growth plan, your life will never be the same again. If you plan, and I can see some people here who have made that decision, to come here either the first Friday of every month, 6 to 8 o'clock, or the first Saturday of every month, 3 to 5 o'clock. If you purpose to come, if you commit to come, don't come emotionally. Don't come erratically, sporadically, by feelings. You commit to come. Don't give stories of traffic jams and rings. When you have had a, when you've had the had the downpours and traffic, we've still had audience here. When convenient people are sleeping, the committed people are still here. Can you imagine the lessons you missed last year? I was teaching on strategic thinking. I was teaching on the power of an idea. And while I encourage you to watch YouTubes, they cannot replace a live meeting. Do you agree with me? Yes. Would you replace your Sunday services and start watching preachers in your house? Is it the same? There is something called the spirit of the moment. The emotion, that hour where your spirit connects with my spirit. The rest is listening to inspirational talks. But right now, I guarantee you, something is happening on your inside. I guarantee you. I can sense it. I can feel it. I can feel a transfer of my spirit to you people. And that's the difference. Commit yourself. Then purpose, if you have not done the 12-month program, my life journey, where we teach in details, in intense, in small groups, of seven to ten people, purpose to be there. Let me read you one testimony. I receive so many testimonies, almost on a day-to-day -day basis. Someone said me this. I don't know her. I've never met her. Dr. Kinyanjui, I could not let this year end without my personal acknowledgement. I first met you when you came to NPC Karen last year, and I've since become a member together with my son, who is in junior club. When you taught this a cycle, I knew my life had to change. In summary, I got a new job, we bought some land, I was awarded three coveted awards in my organization, we moved into our own home in June, I've grown closer to God, I went back to the gym and finally graduated with my MBA on Friday after eight years. I started writing my goals down, I have my daily five, I'm deliberate about growth, I'm annoyingly positive with lots of positive talk. I listen to personal development audio videos in the car each day, etc., etc. The list is endless. You have changed my life. I'm ever grateful for you. God sent you to me. I thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart. May God continue to give you wisdom to transform generations. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are the next testimony. Every year holds a new promise. Every day presents a new beginning. I now commend you to the Lord God of new beginnings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and be gracious to you. The Lord bless you and turn his face toward you. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen.